Hi everyone. Welcome to our session focused on how we are delivering the power of generative AI to analysts and SQL developers. My name is Peter Vuven and I'm part of the product management team here at Snowflake. I'm joined today by several of my colleagues, Nathan, Nicole, and Ricardo. And today we're going to quickly share our vision for generative AI in Snowflake and then dive into some exciting product announcements, including a new AI service called Snowflake Cortex. You're going to learn how we will help analysts and SQL developers without any AI expertise harness the power of AI in seconds. We will also talk about Snowflake Cortex, a fully managed AI service that hosts and serves industry-leading models. Part of Snowflake Cortex is a new set of functions that are developed and managed by Snowflake that leverage LLMs and ML models. These functions can help you solve a wide range of problems and tasks. And finally, we will talk about a new set of experiences that are built on top of Snowflake Cortex, which enable users to extract data from documents, search across Snowflake, and write SQL queries with natural language. But first, let me set the stage and talk about the platform we're building for generative AI and LLMs. Here you can see an overview of all the functionality available to you right now in Snowflake. These will help you get the most out of generative AI using your enterprise data that is securely stored inside Snowflake. Today, we'll dive into generative AI functionality that helps you deliver value in seconds. We're therefore going to focus on the upper left side of this diagram. And underpinning this section is a new service called Snowflake Cortex. Snowflake Cortex is a new, intelligent, fully managed service that enables organizations to quickly analyze data and build AI applications, all within Snowflake. We're going to talk about two ways users can quickly access and use generative AI using Cortex, through a set of serverless AI and LLM functions, which we've broken down into specialized and general purpose functions, and through a set of LLM-powered experiences like Snowflake Copilot, Document AI, and Universal Search. But keep in mind that Snowflake Cortex also powers building blocks for applications and more advanced use cases. Those will be covered in a separate session. Snowflake Cortex puts LLMs and AI models into the hands of every user. It's extremely easy to use. There's no need to manage any infrastructure. These AI capabilities work truly out of the box and can immediately be used in your daily tasks. It's also flexible. Users can access industry-leading AI models, LLMs, and vector search functionality very easily through a set of SQL and Python functions. And lastly, it's also cost-effective. Our compute is optimized for inference and search to run where your data already lives in a highly secure and governed environment. Snowflake Cortex brings powerful AI and semantic search capabilities to the Snowflake platform. I would now like to hand it over to my colleague, Nathan, which will introduce to you a new feature in Snowflake Cortex, Specialized Functions. Over to you, Nathan. Hi, I'm Nathan Wiegand. I lead the LLM functions on uh, Project Cortex. With Snowflake Cortex, Snowflake users now have access to serverless functions that accelerate everyday analytics and AI app development. With just a single line of SQL or Python, Analysts can instantly access specialized ML and LLM models tuned for specific tasks. They can also leverage more general purpose models for prompting, prompt engineering and in-context learning. Since these are fully hosted and managed by Snowflake Cortex, users always have access to them without the need to bring up and manage expensive GPU infrastructure. They can also use and leverage Snowflake's unified governance framework to seamlessly secure and manage access to their data. Here, I'd like to talk about two categories of specialized functions on Cortex, LLM-based and ML-based functions. We're providing in private preview cost-effective LLM-based models that are great for working with unstructured data. These include answer extraction, extract information from your unstructured data, sentiment detection, identify sentiment of text within your table, text summarization, summarize long documents for faster consumption, and translation, translate text at scale. Cortex also provides these ML-based modeling capabilities with forecasting, generally available soon, 
train on historical time series data, and forecast it into the future with automated handling of seasonality, scaling, and more. Anomaly detection, also generally available soon, lets you identify outliers in your time series data for data pipeline monitoring. Contribution Explorer is in public preview. It lets you quickly identify dimensions contributing to change of a given metric across two different user-defined time intervals. Classification, in private preview soon, will allow you to cat categorize data into predefined classes or labels to better make recommendations based on patterns in the data. Now I'd like to hand off to Nicole to show you these in action. Thanks, Nathan. Hi, I'm Nicole, and I'm a software engineer on the LLM Functions team. But today, I'm going to be an analyst at a ski supply company. And my goal is to get some insights on a database of call transcripts with customers that have had various issues with some of our products. What I want is to get a high-level overview as well as answer some simple questions. And I'm going to show how we can do this all using the new Snowflake Cortex functions in notebooks. So I'm going to be using Snowflake Cortex functions in a Snowflake notebook. Um, which allows us to use a mix of both Python and SQL. So we can leverage some streamlit capabilities in Python, but also stick to the SQL that I know and love as an analyst. So first, let's take a look at what our data looks like. So we can see that we have a table of transcripts, and this has a column for the language, um, which we can see we have some non-English in here. Uh, the product, the category of the product, the damage type that the customer was concerned in, and then the call transcript itself. And we can see that these are pretty much just conversations with a customer service agent, and they can be pretty lengthy. So let's also take a look at the distribution by language, and let's plot that. So this shows me that we actually have not that many uh, rows in English, and we have a bunch of French and German conversations. And this is a bit of an issue for me because as an analyst that only speaks English, I'm not going to be really able to derive any insights from the French and German as they are. Luckily, we have Snowflake Cortex and the snowflake.ml.translate function. So what I want to do is translate the non-English uh, conversations into English. And to do that, we're going to create a new table called transcript English um, that has the same schema as our original table. And we're going to use the snowflake.ml.translate function um, to insert English translations into that table. And we can see that what we're doing here is calling translate. And depending on whether the language column has the value of German, French, or English, that dictates which code we pass into the snowflake.ml.translate function. So where the language is German, we'll pass this code. Where the language is French, we'll pass this one. And then when the language is English, we won't translate the conversation and we'll just leave it alone. Great. So now let's see what the output of that looks like. So we can see that we have all the original rows, but now our transcript is English everywhere, either for when the language column is German or French. And this is great because now I can actually read this. But perhaps these English transcripts are still a bit too long for me to read. And what I want is just a succinct summary. We can do that using some other specialized functions in Snowflake Cortex. So there's answer extraction, which allows me to extract information, sentiment detection, and then text summarization, which is what I want here to summarize long documents um, to be able to quickly go through the entire data set. So for example, if we were to call snowflake.ml.summarize on the transcript, and notice that we're passing the transcript from the transcripts English table because I still want my summaries to be in English. We'll see that we have the given conversation and then the result of the summary function, uh, which is a pretty succinct summary that just has the bare information um, for what I need to know to understand what happened in the conversation. So we can see for this one, for example, a customer called to report some defective buckles, the customer agent apologized, uh, promised a new delivery, the customer expressed disappointment with the delivery time and the agent agreed to expedite it. And then the agent thanked the customer for their patience. And that's pretty much uh, all I need to know about that conversation. And it's a much more digestible format for me to take a look at. But perhaps even these summaries are still too long for me. And if you have a pretty big data set, that's likely to be the case. 
uh, what we can do is use the extract answer function in conjunction with the summaries to get some information from the summaries that's even more succinct. And so what we'll do here is use some streamlit selectors and inputs uh, to be able to filter down our data set and ask questions on top of the summary. And the reason that we want to ask questions on the summary rather than the original English transcript is that our extractive and question answering function uh, will only supply an answer explicitly from the text. And for example, if we have a question that's like, what was the resolution um, to the conversation? There's unlikely to be text in the actual conversation that says the resolution was blank. But if we have a summary, we're probably going to get uh, something that looks like that. So we can extract answers from that summary and get answers to those types of questions. So let's filter down the data and pick a single product and a single damage type to look at. And then let's input a question that we want answered. So for example, what was the resolution reached? And now uh, we're going to run the following uh, Python cell, which actually has some SQL in it to get the answer to that question for those products and damage types. Um, and what we can see what we're doing here is passing the snowflake.ml.summarize function, the result of that on the English transcripts into the snowflake.ml.extract answer function with the question that we've input above. So what this will do is extract an answer from the summary rather than extract an answer from the transcript. And we can see here that this is really effective because now I have a resolution column uh, that very succinctly describes what the resolution of the conversation was. And I still have all the other data uh, columns here to look at so I can understand the whole context of this row. And we could do the same um, if we wanted to look at a different product and a different damage type. So for example, now maybe I'm interested in figuring out what's going on with our dry proof 670 uh, jacket. And here I want to look at the wash out color damage type. We can run the same exact cell below uh, with these new inputs. And let's take a look at what we have here. Great. So now we have some rows for the dry proof 670 product, um, the washed out color damage type, and the resolution that was reached for that conversation. It looks like in most cases, they either uh, offered to send new jackets or offered a refund. And the nice thing about these cells specifically is that I didn't have to edit anything here to be able to change the uh, type of data that I was looking at or the question that I was trying to answer. And this is nice because with Snowflake Notebooks, I can send this uh, notebook around to my manager and my coworkers, and they don't have to duplicate any of my work or any of my Python or, or the SQL that I wrote here. They just have to change their inputs up here in a very user-friendly way and be able to answer their own questions. So in summary, I use the Snowflake Cortex specialized functions to translate a bunch of customer calls into English um, and persist that data in a new table so that other analysts can use it as well. I got summaries of some of those conversations to reduce the amount of text that I need to read um, to be able to glean insights. And I also got answers on top of those summaries uh, for some key questions on the filtered data. And the nice thing about this is I did this all in a Snowflake notebook, which I can share with my coworkers um, and inserted some really nice visualizations using Streamlit to make it even nicer for my coworkers to take a look at. And this was all powered by Snowflake Cortex functions. And now I'll hand it back over to Peter. Nathan and Nicole just covered a set of specialized functions but we are also announcing a set of general purpose functions today. These will allow you to run inference on conversational LLMs and execute vector search functionality. We are really excited about these will help you quickly build LLM powered applications that use retrieval augmented generation or RAG by combining state-of-the-art LLMs with vector embedding and vector similarity search functions. We really believe that these are incredible building blocks, and we can't wait to see what you will build on top of this. Next, we will talk about a set of LLM-powered experiences that are built on top of Snowflake Cortex. These have beautifully designed user interfaces and are extremely easy to use. 
They're powered by high-performance LLMs and search capabilities that are fully hosted and managed by Snowflake Cortex. This makes them ideal for business teams and analysts across organizations. Let's start with Document AI. This is a feature that we announced at our summit in June. It allows users to easily extract structured data from PDF documents and to build a pipeline for doing this at scale. We've built a beautiful UI for this, and this is extremely easy to use. And very importantly, this is powered by our own in-house LLMs, which are specifically trained for this task. This feature is in private preview today, so please reach out to your account team if you would like to have access. I would now like to hand it over to my colleague, Ricardo, who will talk about universal search. Over to you, Ricardo. Thanks, Peter. Hey, everyone. I'm Ricardo Muti. I'm a product manager at Snowflake, and I work on Marketplace and other features that help you discover data and apps in the data cloud. As a data analyst, you might have access to hundreds or thousands of tables, views, and other data assets within your organization. So when you're trying to answer a business question or just get something done, sometimes the hardest part is just finding the right data. So to make it easier, we're introducing universal search in Snowsight. And we're making it available starting today in private preview. Universal Search makes it quick and easy to discover data, apps, and other resources in the data cloud. It does that in a couple of key ways. First, with Universal Search, you can go to one place, type in what you're looking for, and discover a variety of types of things that might be helpful. With our first preview release, that includes data in your Snowflake account, databases, schemas, tables, and views, it includes data and Snowflake native apps that other organizations have shared with yours or published to the Snowflake marketplace. And it includes relevant articles from Snowflake documentation. And we'll add support for other Snowflake object types over time. Traditionally, without universal search, you'd have to navigate to and search a bunch of different places to discover all these things. The second way that universal search helps you find what you're looking for is through a deeper understanding of your search query and of the objects in the data cloud. It's one thing to have a search feature for something where you can type in a keyword and get back the objects whose names include that keyword. It's another thing entirely to have an intelligent search engine for something. And universal search is that search engine for the data cloud. It's powered by state-of-the-art search engine technology that we recently acquired from Diva. It uses large language models and machine learning models to understand your query at a deeper level, the semantics of what you're looking for, to look deeper into the metadata of these objects, and to pinpoint the things that are most relevant to what you search for. Let me show you just a few examples of universal search in action. Okay, so here I am in universal search, and one of the simplest things I can do is I can just search for a table that I've used before. I know we have some data from our CRM system in here, and I know I've used a table called opportunity. So to find it, I could go to the list of databases and remember the name of the database and expand the tree, or I could simply search for it. So I'm gonna search for opportunity, and there it is. Universal search is the fastest way to find a table. I may have done it too fast because it looks like I made a typo. That's not how you spell opportunity, but universal search does spelling correction, so it understood what I meant to type. Now I want to pull a list of sales leads, so I'm going to search for leads. And you'll notice that I can discover data within my Snowflake account, articles from Snowflake documentation, and data products from the Snowflake marketplace. For now, I'm just gonna focus on tables in my Snowflake account. There are multiple tables for leads and they could have slightly different columns. So I'm actually not sure which one I need to use. What I wanna do is find a list of leads that we should email. So I need to make sure that they haven't opted out from emails. So we can leave the land of keyword searches here and be a bit more conversational with our search queries. I could say something like leads who haven't opted out of email. And it turns out it's this lead EXT table that contains the column that I need. It has opted out of email. The other tables don't have that column. Universal Search highlights specific columns that are relevant to my query. The other thing I want to make sure is that we don't email someone too often. We don't spam them. So maybe I want to add, uh, and when we most recently emailed them. And here it found last activity date, which is interesting because I didn't type any of those words, last activity date. But date is relevant to when, and last is a synonym for most recently. 
And other columns in this table suggest the semantic connection between activity and email. Now let's try some full conversational questions. Let's ask about a different type of sales activity, phone calls. Maybe I wanna know how long do our sales calls last? This is interesting because nothing in my search query matched anything in the table name. There's no table name called sales calls or calls. They're lumped together with emails and meetings in a table called activity history. But I don't need to know the name of the table. Call duration in seconds is what came up. Universal Search can find relevant columns in the tables even when the table name isn't the strong match for your query. Let's ask about another type of sales activity. Zoom meetings. Maybe I wanna know what percentage of sales activities are Zoom meetings. And here it found the column is online meeting. Another example of this sort of thing, what percentage of leads came from partner referrals. And here it found lead source, which tells me whether it came from a partner referral. So in these examples, my search query, it didn't match the column names, but it's picking up on something else. It's picking up on the info in the column descriptions or comments. The description for the lead source column lists some different lead sources, including partner referral. So now you can help data analysts find the right data by annotating your tables, views, and columns with other words that they might search for. Now, suppose the VP of sales has kicked off this project called Project Red Zone to close some of our most important late stage opportunities before the end of our fiscal year. I might wonder, uh, is there a list of Project Red Zone opportunities? And it's turning up the opportunities table with a field called custom field 05. Now, why is it turning that up? Turns out they used a custom field in our CRM system to flag which opportunities are red zone opportunities. But we don't have red zone in the column name. We don't have it in the column description. So where is it coming from? It turns out users have been running queries like this one, where they know to look in the custom field 05 field for that red zone flag, and they've been aliasing it with column analysis that include the term red zone. And through that column alias, Universal Search has learned that custom field 05 is related to red zone. I'd like to show you one more thing. Maybe I wanna know how can I forecast next year's sales call volume? And notice how Universal Search is gonna help you discover a variety of types of things that might be useful. It's turning up the activity history table because of course my historical sales call volume should be an input into my forecasted sales call volume. It's also finding documentation about how to do time series forecasting in Snowflake through the forecast function, as well as data products from the marketplace. Maybe I want to incorporate the economic outlook or customer demand forecasting into my sales call volume forecast. With that, you've seen how Universal Search gives you one place to discover data, apps, and other resources in the data cloud, and how, powered by large language models and machine learning models, it's able to understand your query more deeply and connect you with the most relevant results. So now you suppose you find a data set, one you've never used before, how can you quickly familiarize yourself with it and get insight out of it? For that, I'll turn it back to Peter to tell you about Snowflake Copilot. Next, I'm excited to announce Snowflake Copilot. This is an LLM powered assistant that brings the power of generative AI to everyday coding tasks inside Snowflake. We are starting with SQL, so you can ask Copilot a question and it will suggest a SQL query in response, which you can then run to get to your answer. You can also refine the query further through conversation with Copilot. We really think that this can help accelerate your existing workflows inside Snowflake. Snowflake Copilot is powered by our own in-house LLM, which is specifically trained for the text-to-SQL use case. We also leverage our own in-house universal search capabilities that Ricardo already talked about, which truly help bring Snowflake Copilot to the next level. Snowflake Copilot will be available in our Snowside UI as a side panel where you can ask your questions. No setup required, and you're going to see how easy it is to use for your everyday SQL tasks. Now, I'd like to show you a live demo of Snowflake Copilot in action. OK, for this demo, we're going to use the Cybersyn GitHub Archive dataset. You can find this in Snowflake Marketplace, and you can see that I've navigated to the marketplace in our UI, and I've found this uh, dataset 
Uh, you can now install that into your Snowflake account with a single click. Um, I'm going to assume for this demo that we've already done that. And so I'm going to navigate to a worksheet that has this uh, selected. Here you can see the uh, Copilot side panel already opened, but just to kind of show you how you can discover it, in the bottom right corner, there is a button that says Ask Copilot. When I click on that, it will open this beautiful side panel. Now, this is where you can ask any question to Copilot, and uh, it will provide an answer uh, that will be a SQL query that you can then run or edit if you would like to. Um, since we are using the GitHub archive data set, why don't we start with a question about how many stars GitHub stars were given in the past year? So how many stars were given in the past year? Amazing. Uh, so as you can tell, it provided a, a SQL query here, which I can add to the worksheet or I can add and run at the same time. So let's say I would like to add that here. One of the things that you'll notice is that we included this really helpful uh, comment that makes it easy for you to understand when you go back later uh, what led, what set of questions led to this particular SQL query that was generated by Snowflake Copilot. I can then go ahead and run it, and you can see that it provided an answer, uh, which is around 71 million GitHub stars. Now let's say that my next question is, uh, how many stars does the streamlit repo have? Amazing, okay, so it provided a query. Something that I'm noticing here, since we're using two different tables, I'm wondering if we could use a join instead. So let's ask it to do that. Very cool. It was able to join successfully on these two tables. And just to show you that this indeed led to the same answer, let's run this query, 28,751. And now let's run the second query with the join in it. And this led to the exact same answer. So this is a really cool example how you can really instruct Snowflake Copilot to um, modify the query in a way that you would like it to do. Now, let's say my next question is about um, what this looked like for each month of 2023. So what did this look like for each month of 2023? It generated a, a more complicated query with a, with a group by. Um, so why don't we run this? Amazing. So you can see that for each month of 2023, and we're, uh, we're in October now, it provided the number of stars that were added to the, to the Streamlit repository. Now, maybe I'm curious to see if the repo grew faster in 2022 or in 2023. So why don't we ask that? Did the repo grow faster in 2022 or 2023? Add the number of stars for each year. Okay, so you can see that it generated a more complicated query. So it, it through a width statement, it actually used two different queries to get the number of stars for both years. And then it um, created a final query to, to make the comparison. So why don't we run this? And it answered the question directly. So 2023 was the year with uh, faster growth. And it also showed the number of stars that were added in 2022 and 2023. Super, super cool. Okay, so maybe now I'm curious about um, one of the Snowflake DB repos. So which Snowflake DB repo has the most stars? Okay, so it's using like, great. Let's run this. Amazing, so it found the one with the most stars, which is the Snowflake Connector Python repo, which has around 500 stars. So now maybe I'm kind of curious to compare this with the Streamlit repo. So how does this repo compare to the Streamlit repo? Amazing. Again, it created a couple different queries to get to this answer. Um, let's run this and see what comes out. Okay, very cool. So it created a side-by-side -side comparison for the, the Snowflake DB uh, repo and the Streamlit DB, uh, the Streamlit repo. You can see that the Streamlit uh, has a lot more stars as of now. Um, there is another table in this uh, data set that's called uh, um, 
uh, GitHub events, and it has all the events like pull requests, etc., uh, in there. And so maybe I'm curious to see how many events the Streamlit repo has. Very cool. Um, so why don't I run this? Okay, amazing. So it's around 90,000 um, events that were generated. Now, um, maybe I'm curious to see if there are any um, actors, so creators of these events uh, that are shared across the Streamlit and Snowflake DB repos. So the same person actually contributing to both repos. So how many distinct actors created events in both the Streamlit and Snowflake DB repo. Let's see what it provides. Okay, amazing. Um, so one thing that's cool to point out is that even though I didn't really explicitly specify which Snowflake DB re repo I wanted to use, because of the uh, history in this conversation, it was able to infer that we are still talking about the Snowflake connector Python um, uh, repo. And here it's uh, uh, using a join to uh, to determine if there are any overlapping actors. So why don't we run this? Amazing. Okay, so it found that there are uh, 182 distinct actors across both of these repositories. And so that seems to indicate that there are uh, multiple individuals that are contributing to both of these code bases, which is unsurprising since both are maintained by Snowflake. Okay. This concludes our demo of Snowflake Copilot. We showed you how you can use Copilot to write SQL queries and to refine these through conversation, which can really help accelerate your workflow. We're really excited to see how you will use this. And that concludes our presentation. We would like to thank you for joining us today, and we hope you're as excited about these new generative AI features and capabilities as we are. If you would like to learn more about generative AI and LLMs in Snowflake, we recommend another Snow Day session called Snowflake for AI and ML. You can also learn more about any of these capabilities by reaching out to your account team. Thank you again for listening, and we hope you have a really nice day.